Miriam, Miriam is described in the Hebrew Bible as the daughter of Amram and Jochebed, and the sister of Moses and Aaron. She was a prophetess and first appears in the book of Exodus. The Torah refers to her as, "...Miriam the prophetess", and the Talmud names her as one of the seven major female prophets of Israel. Scripture describes her alongside of Moses and Aaron as delivering the Jews from exile in Egypt. For I brought you up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam." According to the Midrash, just as Moses led the men out of Egypt and taught them Torah, so too Miriam led the women and taught them Torah. <inaudible> Biblical narrative Miriam was the daughter of Amram, the leader of the Israelites in ancient Egypt, and of Yochebed and the sister of Aaron and Moses. The narrative of Moses's infancy in the Torah describes an unnamed sister of Moses observing him being placed in the Nile X2 she is traditionally described as being Miriam. In the biblical narrative of the Exodus, Miriam is described as a «prophetess» when she leads the Israelites in the Song of the Sea after Pharaoh's army is destroyed at the Sea of Reeds, the Torah describes Miriam and Aaron as criticizing of Moses's Cushite wife in Numbers 12, regarding the death of Miriam, the Torah states, "...the entire congregation of the children of Israel arrived at the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people settled in Kadesh. Miriam died there and was buried there." Interpretations and elaborations Cushite wife Midrashic explanation The Midrash explains the entire story as follows, it became known to Miriam and Aaron that Moses had separated from intimacy with Sipporah. They disapproved of this separation because they considered her to be outstandingly righteous, much as a dark-skinned person stands out among light-skinned people, hence the reference to Sipporah as a Kushite. This usage of the word Kushite is non-pejorative and is often used in Jewish sources as a term for someone unique and outstanding. In fact, King Saul and even the Jewish people are referred to by the term Kushite. Their complaint, therefore, was not about the union between Moses and Sipporah, but about their separation. The only justification they could find for Moses's celibacy was in order to maintain his prophetic state. This explains their claim that God spoke not only to Moses but also to them, yet they had not separated from their spouses. But God rebuked them by calling them all out suddenly, causing Miriam and Aaron a great burning sensation since they lacked immersion in a mikvah after marital relations. God thus demonstrated to them Moses's unique level of prophecy for which he had to be prepared at all times, thereby justifying his separation from Sipporah. Afterwards, God's wrath flared against them. Rabbi Louis Ginsburg wrote the anger of God to them. I myself ordered him to abstain from conjugal life, and the word he received was revealed to him clearly and not in dark speeches. He saw the divine presence from behind when it passed by him. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against a man like Moses, who is, moreover, my servant? Your censure is directed to me, rather than to him, for the receiver is no better than the thief, and if Moses is not worthy of his calling, I, his master, deserve censure." Afterward, Miriam is left with bodily zarat, which according to Jewish sources is a divine punishment for slander. This was because she, not Aaron, was the one who initiated the complaint against Moses. Despite Miriam's intent to help Sipporah, she should have judged Moses favorably and approached Moses on Sipporah's behalf privately. Aaron asks Moses to intercede for Miriam, Moses prays to God to heal her, and God concedes after requiring a quarantine of seven days. Both Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses, but only Miriam contracted Zarat. It has been suggested that since according to the Hebrew Bible anyone with Zara'at was Tameh Leviticus chapters 13 to 14, Aaron was spared this punishment in order not to interrupt his duties as high priest. However, noting the wording of the verse, God's wrath flared against them i.e. both Aaron and Miriam, the Talmud appears to conclude that Aaron was also smitten with Zara'at initially, but was then immediately cured. Topic: <laughs> Alternative explanations. It has been suggested that Josephus and Irenaeus who merely cites Josephus identify the Cushite woman as Tharbas, the daughter of the king of the Ethiopians. 
However, while Josephus does describe a legend which is not written in the Torah wherein Moses marries this princess during a military campaign he leads in Ethiopia, according to Josephus this marriage occurs while Moses is still a royal prince of Egypt long before he re-discovers his oppressed Jewish brethren. After which time, upon fleeing as a solitary fugitive from Egypt, the only marriage of Moses that the Torah records is with Sipporah the daughter of Yitro the Midianite. In fact, Josephus himself later records Moses's marriage to Sipporah as separate and subsequent to his earlier marriage to Tharbas. Furthermore, according to the conclusion of the Tharbas legend, Moses fashioned a miraculous ring which caused her to forget her love for him, and he then returned to Egypt alone. Therefore, even according to Josephus, Moses's first marriage to Tharbas as military leader of Egypt terminated long before his later marriage to Sipporah as fugitive from Egypt, such that the Cushite wife of Moses mentioned in the Torah after the Exodus appears to be Sipporah, as explained above. Richard E. Friedman writes that since Cush is generally understood to mean Ethiopia, it is possible that the Cushite woman is not Sipporah. But he adds that since there is a place called Cushan which is a region of Midian, and Moses's wife Sipporah has already been identified as a Midianite, it is possible that the term Cushite relates to Sipporah's being from Cushan. However, Friedman's primary interest is not in the identity of the Cushite woman, but rather in the outcome of this story which establishes Moses's superiority over Aaron as an example of his claim that rival priesthoods created or publicized tales in order to legitimize their respective claims to privilege and power. He describes the Aaronid priesthood in the kingdom of Judah, which claimed descent from Aaron and which controlled the temple in Jerusalem, as opposed to a priesthood which claimed allegiance to Moses and was based at Shiloh in the kingdom of Israel. Using interpretations from the documentary hypothesis, he notes that this story, which he calls Snow White Miriam, was authored by the Elohist who he claims was from, or supported, the Shiloh priesthood, and thus promoted this tale to assert Moses's superiority over Aaron and thereby belittle the Aaronid priesthood in Judah. However, the identity of the Cushite woman referred to in this story is tangential to Friedman and his opinion remains inconclusive. The Well of Miriam Miriam's death is described in Numbers 20 verse 1 and in the next verse, the Israelites are described as complaining of the lack of water at Meribah. In Jewish tradition, this abrupt transition was explained by imagining a well of Miriam that dried up when she died. Further elaboration identified the rock that Moses struck to bring forth water in Exodus 17 verses 5–6 with this well, and said that the rock travelled with the people until Miriam's death. The Talmud says, three great leaders led Israel, Moses, Aaron and Miriam. In their merit they received three great gifts, the well Miriam, the clouds of glory Aaron, and the manna Moses. When Miriam died, the well was removed as is evidenced by the fact that immediately after the verse and Miriam died, Rashi says that this well was the same rock from which Moses brought forth water after Miriam's death. The Midrash states that when they encamped, the leader of each tribe took his staff to the well and drew a line in the sand toward his tribe's encampment. The waters of the well were drawn after the mark and thus supplied water for each of the tribes. <laughs> Symbolism in modern practice. Miriam is a popular figure among some Jewish feminists. Thus, in addition to the traditional cup of wine that is set for the prophet Elijah, some feminist-inspired cedars set a cup of water for Miriam which is sometimes also accompanied by a ritual in her honor. Miriam's cup originated in the 1980s in a Boston Rosh Hodesh group. It was invented by Stephanie Liu, who filled it with what she referred to as Mayim Hayim living waters and used it in a feminist ceremony of guided meditation. Miriam's cup is linked to the Midrash of Miriam's Well, which is a rabbinic legend that tells of a miraculous well that accompanied the Israelites during their 40 years in the desert at the Exodus from Egypt. Some modern Orthodox Jews have revived an ancient custom of adding a piece of fish to the Seder plate in honor of Miriam, who is associated with water, based on the teaching in the Talmud that God gave manna on the ground in the merit of Moses, clouds of glory in the sky in the merit of Aaron, and a well of water in the merit of Miriam. Accordingly, the lamb earth, egg air, and fish water in the Seder symbolize the three prophets Moses, Aaron and Miriam, respectively, whom God chose to redeem the Jews from Egypt. Similarly, the lamb, egg and fish also allude to the three mythical creatures in Jewish tradition, the land beast Behemoth, the bird Ziz, and the sea creature Leviathan, respectively. 
According to the Midrash, the Leviathan and Behemoth, as well as the Ziz, are to be served at the Sudat Tekiyat Hamadim, the feast for the righteous following the resurrection of the dead, to which the Passover Seder alludes, insofar as it commemorates the past redemption together with the Cup of Elijah's heralding the future, final redemption. Quranic account In the Quran, as in the Hebrew Bible, Miriam obeys her mother's request to follow the baby Moses as he floats down the river in a basket, their mother having set him afloat so he would not be killed by Pharaoh's servants and soldiers 28 Later on, Asiya, wife of Pharaoh, finds Moses at the river and adopts him as her own, but Moses refuses to be suckled by her. Miriam asks Pharaoh's wife and her handmaidens to have his own mother act as nursemaid to Moses, the mother's identity not being known to Pharaoh's wife 28 -13. Notes External links Miriam's Cup, a new ritual for the Passover Seder